everybody. Good morning. Glad you all are here on a Tuesday. It is Tuesday, January 19. Pretty sure it's the 19th. Um, and I wanted to do Change the Shed today because, of course, tomorrow is the inauguration of our new president in the United States. And there's a lot of anxiety around that. So um, maybe just my own, but I didn't want to um, do a live event uh, right during the middle of the inauguration. So we're here today when things are still. Um, we're just happy to be weaving. So um, welcome, everybody. Um, I just am watching your chat. Y'all are talking about the design solutions class. I really appreciate it. Um, Jessica, they're talking about design solutions, too, where there's a um, interview with Michael Rohde. That's really wonderful. So all of you who've jumped into design solutions, too, I really um, appreciate you being there. There have been some amazing discussions, especially about Michael Rohde's um, interview. So I was excited to interview him because I knew he would have some really useful tips, and he did indeed. So that particular class um, is open for registration until the end of January, and then I will close it until the summer, just so that the people in the class can um, have a cohesive group and I won't have new people coming in all the time. So you have another week and a half or something if you want to register. Um, yeah, and those of you, I've been watching those of you who are getting your COVID vaccines. I'm um, a little bit jealous, actually. I am at the absolute bottom of the list, so I can pretty safely say I won't be teaching anywhere until at least October because I won't be getting a vaccine until then. Um, so that's how it goes. Um, people who are at higher risk should get the vaccine first, but I would... This is my new soapbox. Just please, all of you who have gotten the vaccine, it's still so important to wear masks. Those of us who haven't had it, those of us who are immunocompromised, we really need you to continue to wear your masks um, because you can still transmit the vaccine, they think, even if you have had the vaccine. So please, for my sake, and all of the people out there who the vaccine will not work for, please continue to wear your masks, wash your hands, social distance, it's so important. That is my PSA for today. Um, I'm so glad you're all here. Jean, is the end of Janu January, January 31st? Yes, like midnight on the last day of January. Um, um, anyway, yes, um, there's hope in the world and um, there's weaving, so let's weave. Uh, I'm glad you're here from all over, my gosh, I would go through the list, but it is um, similar to what it usually is from all over the world and all over the United States, and I'm really happy you all are here. I am back to the Aras loom today. So let me show you. My camera set up just, I can't quite get it right today because you got the side of my face, not really what I want, but <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I I had talked about this earlier that I was thinking about doing this, and Shacked has been so helpful. Um, let me do this again. Shacked has been really helpful in terms of helping me get an extra shedding device. So the loom comes with one of these, and I wanted to try a second one. Many of you who um, maybe did, there was a weave along that um, Mirex did in, I, I'm pretty sure it was 2012, because I remember that I got married and I was setting up that loom at the same time. Um, I never actually wove a piece on it, I just warped it. So it's possible to warp a Merix with two shedding devices, but I don't actually know if it works because I never wove the piece. I eventually took the warp off. So I'm trying it on this loom because as you'll remember, this is the hand basket piece. It is two sets. It is um, 16 EPI and eight EPI. And I had it set up for eight EPI um, with the shedding device. But 16 EPI was picking, um, it would have been smarter to just set it up with the shutting device at 16 and because it's easier to pick at 8 than 16. But I wanted to try two shutting devices. So the jury's still out about whether this works. Um, and you'll see as I'm working on it what I mean by that. The shutting device at the top is there's so much... Um, in the way between the top shed and where I can pick up the shed that I it's the very top shed is not really working very well. So I think that's a limitation that maybe isn't solvable. 
So I'm kind of doubting that um, you will want to go right out and buy a second shedding device for the Shacked Loom, if they even offer it. They were so good to um, allow me to get a second one. But anyway, it's fun. I'll show you what it um, is looking like. And um, you guys are so great. Thanks for the mask comments. You, you all know I'm preaching to the choir. You are all the best about masks and keeping everybody safe. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Um, so the top shedding device I have set at 8 ends per inch and the bottom at 16, which is a lot of heddles. Man, um, I don't know how people who weave at 16 EPI don't use shedding devices because um, it's, it's uh, yeah, it makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to zoom in and you won't be able to see the shedding device anymore, but you will be able to see what I'm working on. This is the hand basket tapestry, which y'all have probably seen more of than you maybe want to, but um, I haven't done a ton since you saw it last. So here we are. Let's see if I can adjust my camera. Okay, hopefully that will work. So this area is 16 EPI, and I want to fill in a little triangle here to where this um, W comes back in again. The tapestry says I was told there would be a hand basket, and there's an image up here of um, a woman falling out of a basket, and it's about that um, quote, uh, going to hell in a hand basket, which pretty well describes 2020. Hopefully not 2021. One of the tricks if you're going to put two shedding devices on is to remember to put the handles on opposite sides. Um, actually, on the shaft limb, you probably could get away with it maybe on the same side, but um, the Merex loom has a hook, so you have to definitely change side to side. So, yeah. Let's see if I can remember what I was doing here. So what I want to do is fill in this little triangle. This is where the W comes in. And I want to fill in this little triangle so I can put in the next letter. And the, uh, you'll notice I'm still using a shed stick, even with the shedding device. One thing I like about the shacked loom is that the shedding device isn't all or nothing. You can um, you can open it just a little bit. So if you're working in an area, like I was working on this S the other night, and um, you know it's really quick changes, just a couple warps, and so I can just open the shedding device a tiny bit, as if I had like a copper pipe loom with an open shed and a closed shed, and I can easily grab the warps from the back with a pickup stick and then find the ones in the front. And um, just much faster than having a flat shed, in my opinion. So I actually can, most of my issues here are with vision, not with, <laughs> I actually can get my fingers in there. With this bottom shed. And I'm trying to figure out what that angle is. I'm also not for, I can make the shed open farther. It's uh, let's go one more there. And then here I'm gonna pick up, can you all see that? I'm gonna pick up that warp right there. Probably would be easier to see if I had it, something behind it. Hold on. Try this. Is that better? Let's try it. So there I'm picking up that work. Looks like you can sort of see that. Okay, 
I'm using just one strand of Weaver's Bazaar Fine at 16 EPI. I think you might be able to get away with two, but it would be close. <clears throat> um, yeah, Kate, I tried that. I tried moving the shutting devices farther apart. It was even worse. There's a. It's not that they're inhibiting each other. They're not. It's that um, the shed is only opens like three quarters of an inch, and so the place where it's open the widest when I'm using this very top shed is right under the bar, and I can't get my hand in there because there's another bar in the way. So if I look from the side, the shed's not being impeded by the other bar, but if I move this down, it'll be even worse because then um, I, you know, the shed gets narrower as you go farther down, and so it will be even harder to get my... So if I open this one, I can get this shed, which is the bottom one, but the top one is really narrow. And up here, if I didn't have this bar, the shed is nice and big, but I can't get my fingers in there because there's a bar in the way. So that's the logic for putting them close together. <clears throat> I did think it might be possible to put um, a set of, I guess it would have to be shorter heddles. I was gonna say longer heddles on the top. If they were shorter, it would pull the wart forward more and that might actually help. But that's a lot of bother to be honest. Okay. Still have not made it to the optometrist and now the numbers are so bad in Colorado that I don't know when I will. So forgive me, I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> I usually wear um, readers when I'm working on this part because I can't see it, but I'm too vain to do it on video. Okay. <clears throat> Add a new weft in here. This is wool. <clears throat> it's Weaver's Bazaar, eighteen two wool and I'm also using their um, 62 is it 62 silk anyway I'm also using silk on this piece but this is the wool usually um, have the cartoon right behind my work. It's not my favorite. I don't like the noise it makes, but this piece is so complicated in terms of the, um, it's not complicated compared to what some people weave, but the letters, um, the shaping of the letters. I need the cartoon to see what I'm doing there. Okay, so I'm just making a diagonal right there. And now I'm moving this over. I had shaped this is the eight EPI portion and I had shaped that earlier. So I'm just moving this junction over a little at a time. Oh, that totally looks like a different color. I think it's just a variation in the yarn or it is my light. I'm 99% sure I have not switched the colors, but Light is so important. can't remember what that, oh yeah, that's the new, um, these are marker lines for where the next word comes in. So I need this 
portion to sort of come back a little bit to leave room for where that word comes in. And then, yeah, the 16 EPI will go behind the word and then the basket will be in there also. So that should be fun. I'll, let, I'll show it to you all when I get to that point. Yeah, Kate's asking if I change beaters for different parts of the piece. I totally do. So I love this little guy. Um, for the 16 EPI, it's narrower, and it I can really get in there. Like, so when I am, I'm actually using it to place the weft. It's just too, you know, the wet. It's too fine to use my fingers, like I might do on uh, 80 EPI. So I'm using the. Can you see that? Yeah, I'm using the beater to um, actually place this turn. And I like this one because it's um, tiny. I have another, let's see. This is a different company. These are three different companies, are they? No, these two are the same company, sorry. Um, yeah. Anyway, this is from Thomas uh, Creations, Threads Through Time on Etsy, and they make these adorable little guys. Um, Magpie Woodworks also makes a smaller one than this. This is their little beater and there's a mini beater, which is which works the same way as this one. I think right now she's um, had to close her shop. The Magpie um, owner's name is Becky and she is a tapestry weaver and she's, I think right now she's had to close her shop. She's um, had some um, illness issues she needs to recover from, but I think she'll be open again fairly soon. So if you want to magpie beater, they're really great. So anyway, what Kate was asking, do I use a different beater for different sets? Yes. I'll use this one um, or if it's an even wider area, I might use one like this. this these are both magpie beaters for um, the ADPI. And we need one more there. Okay, so. It's hard to see how many wraps I've done. None on that one, okay. Susan said she got some Hairspell Highland from Dakota Designs and she needs to scour it. Susan, I have a blog post about scouring that was in the last year. If you just go to my blog and look under the category yarn, you should find it really quickly. There's full instructions on how to do scouring there. Um, I use Dawn, the blue original Dawn I often will use or I will use, um, actually when I scour yarn, I almost always just use dish soap, either Dawn or um, seventh generation, which is a pH neutral dish soap. It's a good question. I finally wrote a blog post about it because so many people ask me how do you scour the Harrisville uh, yarn. Okay, that looks good. I'm just going to go back one more time. Um, Paula, that's a good question. Do you use the bottom warping coil on your Mirax looms? If so, do you wish there was a bottom coil on the Aras? I love the bottom coil on the Mirax. It makes warping um, evenly a lot easier. That said, I didn't, they didn't have a bottom coil for the first five or six years I used Mirax looms 
and it was fine. So it just takes a lot of time to spread the warps evenly. Um, I think with this design on the Aras, there's probably no way to put a bottom coil on it. And the um, the thing I like about, one of the things that I like about this loom over the Mirax is that the space between the warp layers, and you can see there's another layer of warp back there, is much wider than the Mirax. Mirax does sell an extra bottom beam. You can buy an extra, they're an inch and a half or something, and put it behind the other beam and clamp it on, which gives you the same effect as this. So um, the extra wide um, space there is partly because this bottom, um, you can't see it right now, but the bottom of the loom is tilted. It's just the way it's constructed, and i do not not sure they could put a coil on this one, but. Um, yes. Um, I bought uh, the Blue Dawn. You guys are talking about the um, dish soap. I've, I found Blue Dawn in like gallon jugs at like Home Depot. Um, because I also use it for dyeing, I can buy that much of it. Okay, I think this is going to go here. Let's look at the second shedding device. Yeah, Barb is saying the Dakota designs are pretty color fast. What she means is the yarn they're talking about is Harrisville Highland. So Dakota Designs is just a business that sells um, Harrisville Highland that's been rolled off into smaller amounts. Um, Harrisville Highland has is a woolen spun yarn that has machine oil in it. Um, and by machine oil, they actually use like an organic mix of olive oil. It's not like toxic or anything horrible. It's just that it's still in the yarn if you buy the yarn on the cones. And it's nice to get rid of it if you're going to weave a tapestry. So here is the issue right here with the shed is that I have it in the top shed and I my shed here is maybe a quarter inch. I don't think it's even a quarter inch right here. So um, I originally put the 16 EPI thing above the 8 EPI, and that was clearly a mistake right away. I moved it down um, because it's more important to me to be able to, I can pick the 8 EPI easy, mo much more easily than I can um, grab the 16. Someone asked about why the double set, and that has to do with the image, I wanted some detail. Um, I don't want to weave a whole piece that's 14 inches square at 16 EPI. I'm just not that, I'm not that gal. But I wanted to have um, enough detail in the piece. You could weave these letters at 8 EPI, but they would not look quite so fine. That would be fine, but there's some other detail in the piece that I wanted to make sure I could um, have a finer set. So this one is a little wider. Actually, it's quite a bit wider um, than that top shed. So, you know, ideally I would weave this on one of my floor looms because I have, my Macomber loom has uh, 16 shafts on it and for this you only need four. Um, so if you have a floor loom, doing a double set in tapestry is a really great and easy thing. Also, if you do the fringeless, um, Warping, the warps are automatically doubled and you can split them for some detail. Okay, so here I am just trying to get that edge nice and even. For this one, I split that warp and now I'm going to Is that better? That might be better. Um, 
thinking about how I'm going to fill this in um, to make this come back. I want this to come back sharply now, and maybe it wasn't a good idea to split that one. Um, I'm going to try bringing it back here, and let's see if that works. Might be too much of a step to hide the... My eyes are really playing tricks with me. This um, this is hand dyed, so I know it's slightly varied, but it looks really different to me between here and here, but I don't think it is. I think it's just the slight hand dyed variation. But this is commercially dyed, and it, it looks like it's changing colors to me, and it's waking me out a little bit. I'm gonna have to take the loom outside and give it a good look. Um, a little later just to make sure. Okay, so I wanna fill this in over the top of where that is, and I wanna make sure that's gonna actually work well. I want the gap sort of covered by the fluffiness of the eight EPIs. And we're gonna find out if that works right here. where my eyes are failing me. I cannot see it. I also usually have a light, two lights right here. And if I put the lights there when I'm doing Change the Shed, all you'll see is, is light. Um, I needed to pick up this warp is all that needed to happen there. That should work out. I think it might work. Okay, I really wanted to get to this W, so let me leave this issue for the moment. I think that's going to work. I will assess it again when I weave a couple more picks right there. I just want that little part to make sure that the fluffiness of the ADPI covers up this verge where the two because where they come together, they're not quite working the way tapestry should be because there's an extra warp in there. So I want the ADPI uh, to cover it up. Um, Paula, can you weave tapestry in a rigid hat loop? It's interesting you asked that today. My brain is saying, should I talk about this? Um, so I actually borrowed one of the things when I went to Schacht to get, Schacht is in Boulder, which is about an hour, a little over an hour from, almost an hour and a half from where I live. When I went to get um, the shedding device, I borrowed a Cricut loom, which is a rigid huddle loom, because I've had um, friends who are rigid huddle weavers who have done tapestry, including Liz Gibson, who is a um, yarn worker. If you do rigid heddle stuff, you probably know Liz. She's a fantastic online school, and um, she's just super bright and has written a bunch of books. Anyway, she was doing tapestry, um, some tapestry techniques on a rigid heddle loom, and I talked to her about it, and she tried to convince me that a rigid heddle loom is a great idea for tapestry. And so I borrowed a Cricut. It's actually over there on the floor from Jane, Sha uh, Jane um, Patrick, who is one of the owners of Schacht, um, who's very kind to loan it to me. I'm just going to say I don't like it. I think there are people who can absolutely weave tapestry on a rigid head loom if it is um, one that has uh, better tension. The Cricut is a loom that has some of the rigid head looms, the, the um, tapestry and the warp are wound on the same beams that hold the warp, and those are not, they don't just can't hold a tight enough tension. The Cricut has a separate beam underneath it winds and then static beams that the fabric goes around, more like a floor loom. And I found that the tension is fair. It is far from the tension you would get on a Mirex or on this tapestry loom. And so I'm just going to, I probably will write a blog post about this, so I'll write it down for you. But 
Um, I'm going to maintain my stance that rigid head of looms are not my first choice for tapestry. It is possible to weave tapestry on any loom, but I don't, I just don't, I don't like it. I don't like the heddle. I don't like how it works. It's not easy. It's clunky. It's fine for fabric. It's not great for tapestry. That is totally my opinion. And you can have a separate one. Um, I'm going to try this W with an eccentric weft here. Um, I think. Let's see. Is that what I did here? That is not what I did here. Maybe I will make it match. Um, it's clear from the little steps that I see here that I wove this going back and forth. And my idea for this text is almost like it's just scrawled with a marker, which is actually how I designed it. So let's go and do it the way I had below, which means I'm going to put a pigtail in here. If I didn't have that cartoon in there, I'd really be able to get my hand in there. Okay, and this is what I was talking about earlier where I can actually make the shed, um, I can close it not all the way, but make it enough that I can actually get the two sheds a little bit easier with my fingers, which is something I really like about this loom. I think the loom you choose depends a lot on you know, if you just want to try tapestry and you have a rigid heddle loom, go for it. Um, use what you have. If you want to be a tapestry weaver who weaves a lot of, spends a lot of time weaving tapestry, you're not going to be happy with a rigid heddle loom. The heddle is clunky, um, the tension is poor, and it's just not designed for weaving tapestry. That said, you probably could weave, um, this is sort of the thing I think Liz is was looking at was weaving, um, using tapestry techniques in other kinds of weaving, which is always something that is interesting and possible. Um, The bottom, yeah, you guys are talking about the tray on the Merricks. I should talk about that at a different time when I actually have a Merricks. The Shasta combs, if you put the tray on the Merricks in the right place, the Shasta combs work fine with the tray on. But you can't put the tray, originally Merricks told you to put the tray in a different place than they, you have to put the tray at the top of the, um, at the top of that silver bar instead of in the middle. And I think a lot of people put it in the middle and then they can't get the combs to work. You can take those off and reapply them. Uh, I'm sure I'll be back with Amerix at some point this spring, so I'm cheating a little bit right here. You probably can't see it, but I'm actually doing a little um, cut. I call it cutting off the corners in the warp and weft class in the angle section. Um, I'm actually sort of coming up a little bit to smooth out the step. Uh, but it's not as smooth as it would be with an eccentric, with an eccentric outline. You guys are going to tease me if I keep saying it that way, um, which is fine. I can take it. Oh, Jessica, I have. I was complaining about these magnets last night. She's asking where to get these magnets. I This is the first time I've ever used them. These, I have to look up the company I bought them from, but I hate them. They are so strong, I almost can't get them apart. This weekend, I was weaving on this, and I tried to pull the magnets apart. One of them broke, and I got slivers of the magnet in my fingers. Um, hate these magnets, but they're working really well. <laughs> I hate taking them on and off. They're way too strong. So if anyone knows of where to get rare earth magnets that are not so strong that you can't pull them apart. So they're so strong that they stick to everything and they're making all my tool tools magnetized. These are so strong that I, I am not a weakling and I use my hands a lot. I cannot get those apart without swearing. They're so strong. Hate them. Um, so yes, if 
<laughs> if I wasn't so lazy, I would have sewn this on and gotten rid of the magnets because um, I don't like them. But I know people use them, and I'm sure there are brands out there that are better. So someone will send me a link of a brand to a better rare earth magnet that isn't so strong that it's hurting me. Um, okay, you all, let's see. Let's just get the rest of this little W. How far in should that go? Let's look at this. I think I want one more. I want it to go to here. This will be a little point. I feel like I'm under the gun, like I didn't quite form that quite right. Okay, so then at this point, I need this W, I need to fill in this area, but I actually can't do that until I fill in this. So as in all things tapestry, the next part on this tapestry will be to fill in all of this back and forth and fill in up to this W and then I can bring this green, this is a really dark green, across the top of this and then I'll have to fill in this side and then bring this across and then I'll have to fill in this side and bring that across and that's the way tapestry goes. Some of us love it, some of us think that's crazy and those are the people who just don't understand us weirdos. Um, yeah, sure Paula, um, about the rigid huddle looms, it's um, yeah, I think the I think rigid huddle looms are brilliant, and I actually considered have considered buying one to make things like scarves and other really fun things. I think rigid huddle weaving is fantastic, but just not a great tool for tapestry. I mean, it works. It's just not fabulous. It's just this is so much better. If you're going to buy a shack loom and you possibly can afford to get this instead of um, a rigid huddle loom for tapestry, do it. I've heard Evelyn says um, that someone has a YouTube video where she's making tapestry on Ashford rigid head loom. I have heard that Ashford looms are another one that the rigid head looms are another one that work. Ashford also makes a fantastic tapestry loom. Just saying. Um, yeah, Mary, hole in your thumb where they pinch me. That's the other thing. They'll pinch you. So you try to get them apart and you can't quite get it. Or like you lay one down and we're talking about the rare earth magnets. Sorry. You lay one down and you don't have to get the magnet very close and it like jumps. I think they're scary. I think I just need, uh, I think maybe I should go to sewing the, the so what, what most tapestry weavers would do before rare earth magnets were invented was use a curved needle and stitch this um, cartoon. So my reference cartoon, stitch it on here. And then as I weave, I would stitch it higher and before I roll it, I would take the bottom line of stitches out so that you don't want the cartoon to get rolled onto the bottom beam, whatever the beam is, whether you're rolling it around on a continuous warp or using a loom with beams. Um, yeah, y'all have also had magnet injuries. I'm really glad it's not just me who's had the magnet injuries. I feel. I feel really dumb about it, but um, I just feel like I, so many people are so good with these magnets and I feel like an idiot, like what's wrong? But I think these are just too strong. Ah, thank you, Regina. There are little versions of earth magnets covered in soft plastic that don't break when they hit each other and don't pinch you. So if you find that link, Regina, please send it to me. I will put it on the website for all of you who have had rare earth magnet injuries. I would love to know it. I didn't know they made them covered with plastic, so that's a good thing to look for. Um, Jean, yes. So a question about the Design Solutions 2 class. I will be um, closing it the end of January, but I should have said before, absolutely I will open it again in um, the course, um, live run of the course ends the end of June, and I will open it again for registration in July, and you can take it any time after that. So. Don't feel like it's gone forever if you don't jump in right now. The advantage is that we will have a live portion and people will all be working together for the next um, 
five and a half months. But you can always take it later, so. Uh, Susan asked, what's the whole scent time weaving? It says, I was told there would be a hand basket. So it's that going to hell in a hand basket thing. Um, it's just a meme that was going around Facebook about. It's an old saying, but. Um, yeah, and that's interesting. Uh, the concept of center surround where eyes discount the gradual changes in value, um, which could be happening in the piece. Yeah. Um, so it could be that at the edges, my eyes are actually um, interpreting the colors differently than they are. Because now, actually, I've looked away for a while, and now when I glance back, I'm like, oh, it's fine. It looks, it looks like it should. But boy, when I'm really... Something about my central vision, I think, is is making it look like it looked like this was a much brighter purple there with and it might be because of the white behind it. Thanks, Ann. Ann is um, a fellow retired occupational therapist. So I think maybe are you retired, Ann? Actually, I might not be right about that, but um, I used to be an occupational therapist. And so it's fun to talk to Ann about ergonomics and all kinds of OT things. I've actually had lots of tapestry weavers in my courses who are occupational therapists, so we like tapestry. Okay. Um, ah, and Kate's also asking for quarter inch rare earth magnets, if anyone knows. So send me a link and I will put it up. If any of you have rare earth magnet links, love to see them. Um, and one last question from Jessica about the design solutions class. Um, yes, you, I do recommend taking season one before season two. Um, you don't have to, it's not required, but for example, I'm doing, um, a bunch, a couple more color theory modules and those assume that you know what was in the color theory modules in season one. So it is a nice thing to take in order. Um, cool. Anne says she's retired. Thanks, Anne. I'm glad I remembered that right. Okay, y'all, I have chatted on for quite a while now. Um, I will be back at some point. I don't have an exact date for you, but never fear. Uh, it will happen again as soon as I figure out my calendar for February. So have a good week. Um, I hope that everything goes okay tomorrow all over the world. And um, we'll try to keep our anxiety down as... There is a peaceful transition of power in the United States. Um, happy weaving. I hope you're having fun. Thank you for being so positive about my hand basket tapestry. And um, I am still working on, see, I get it backwards. My display is mirrored, so I get it backwards every time. Right there, that big loom. I, I did warp it over the holidays, so I'll be showing you something on that at some point before too long. Oh, cool. Regina sent me a link and I will put it on the design, on the um, Change the Shed page of my website so y'all can look up where that is. I'll do that in just like the next 10 minutes. So you should see it there. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks for coming from all over the world. Um, thanks for being such fun companions while I weave. And I hope that you've been doing some weaving yourself and that... Um, we're all surviving winter in the Northern Hemisphere. Those of you in Australia, I hope you're not frying down there. Um, I know it's hot, so isn't it interesting how different places on the world in the world experience um, each moment? Take care, you guys, and I will see you soon in about two weeks. I don't know the exact date, but I will um, definitely announce it in all the places. So I'll see you then. Bye-bye.